they were both like blown away. They were like, what? I thought like trainers did like, you know, a weekend class that was like 300 bucks and, you know, a once a year class after that. I was like, yeah, well, some do. But it's like we learn as trainers, we have the opportunity if you're, you know, investing your time and brain in the right spots to learn so much about the body and how to train it and how to make changes, how to modify, how to make a correct stimulus that it's almost a disservice to our clients to be that yelling cheerleader, that motivational quote giver outer, you know, because there's so much more that we can be doing. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast. We're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we're coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And today, we are talking about an exercise-related topic that used, well, I don't even want to say used to, I think still is kind of common from a thought process standpoint in regards to how people view trainers, the role of a trainer, the role of the fitness industry as a whole. And that's kind of this notion of, well, I go to a trainer because they push me really hard. And we're saying, yeah, no, that's, that's actually not our role at all. Absolutely. I'm s- and I'm so excited we're talking about this because um, Charlie and I brought this up over, of course, dinner one night. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I think that some people don't want to ever come into their sessions when they're not feeling 100%. And actually, when you're not feeling 100%, meaning maybe you have an achy joint that day or you woke up with a stiff back or, you know, you're just feeling pretty lethargic or lazy or tired. You're feeling like you, you know, you ate something funky. You just body's kind of feeling off. Obviously, don't come in if you have some contagious illness. But for any other reason. No, no positive COVID. Please. <laughs> but any other reason should be the best reason to go see your trainer because the role of of a trainer is not to push you i know a lot of trainers advertise that that's what they're trying to do but charlie and i view um our our very 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 expensive education (laughs) we've gained a lot more than just how to push someone to their max and guess what some days it's a great day to push it but most days because i don't know about you But we all live like pretty stressful lives. Like we have kids, sometimes we don't sleep. We have stressful workplace. We have conflicts with relationships. We eat poorly. We stay up too late. We wake up too early. We sleep in, our schedule's off. Every single day, there's something stressful going on. And that takes a toll on our physical health. And that means that our exercise needs to change day to day to be appropriate to whatever level you're at that day. And whatever level that matches your current state of your body is actually the best workout to progress your body and to get your body to your goals. Not the workout that you're just pushing it or going to your max. So a quick story because I used to totally be on the other team. I mean, I I was, yeah, no, for (laughs) I I was, I was probably like the captain of the other team. And I remember when I first got into personal training you know, there were options as far as whether somebody could purchase, you know, an hour session or a 30 minute session. And I always liked doing the 30 minute sessions better because I felt like, well, people just can't keep up for a whole hour. Like, so, <laughs> so the 30 minute is way better because, you know, I can, I can really push it with them and, you know, and then they're just not going to be, they just can't keep up for the whole hour and then they don't like doing it. But, you know, 30 minutes is good because then we can really push it. And I was really, I was advertising myself as, you know, like a 30 minute workout specialist. Like, Hey, you know what? You're, you're in a funk, like you come to the gym, but you don't really want to challenge yourself. I'm the guy you go to because I'm going to get you to work hard. I'm going to push you hard. And you know, that was my whole thing. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people loved it. Okay. Most of people didn't, unsurprisingly. And I I remember one time 
early on, I had a, a new member who had just joined the gym. And so she got her, you know, free session or whatever with me. And about 10 minutes in, she looks at me and she goes, I don't need a cheerleader. And I, and I had no idea how to respond back to that because I thought to myself, well, yes, you do. <laughs> that's that's my whole role. Like that's what, what I got certified yeah, to do. What 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 else am I supposed to do aside from stand here, clap, you know, shout motivational things, and tell you to go harder? Like that that was my whole thing. And you know, but don't worry, I have a whole array of exercises that we can do. And you know, I'm gonna pull some out, some new ones out for you that you've never tried before. They're gonna look kind of funky, and then I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna yell at you to do you Cheer know a few you. more reps. Exactly. Yeah. And and it was so funny because when she said that I'm like well, what do you mean you don't need a cheerleader yes you do you're, you're, you're clearly not working out hard enough and that's my role to get you to work out harder so I was totally totally part of the other team like I said I was probably captain of the other team yeah and I have to tell you I was dead wrong and well I mean, clearly some people still like, that's why all the, you know, the high intensity places are still around, you know, all the, uh, the, the super intense ways of, of group fitness and, you know, classes and whatever are, are still around. And, you know, some people still like that for a period of time, but to say that as a trainer, your sole role is to do just that you're totally missing the point, you know, having a client work out hard doesn't mean that you're a cheerleader, but your entire role is not just to be a cheerleader and try to get them to work out hard. So we want to talk with you about that today because there's a misconception here of like, okay, I'm going to go to a trainer and they're going to push me really hard. And that's why I go to a trainer because, you know, I'm not willing to work out that hard on my own. And Julie, like you were saying, the role of the trainer goes so far beyond that. And specifically, look, if your body's ready to be pushed on that day and it's appropriate for you to work out hard, cool, we're getting after it. But if it's not appropriate for you, if your body's not ready to do that, that's where the real skill of training somebody comes in. And that's where all the time and the money and the expertise that you gather through your education and through working with people over the last decade really starts to come in. Yeah, you know, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day. And <laughs> I was saying, you know, I, 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 we were talking about just our professions and, you know, what they were doing, what I was doing. And I said, you know, I just finished this big class and, you know, it's cost me over $25,000 over the last, you know, two to three years. And they were both like blown away. They were like, what? I thought like trainers did like, you know, a weekend class that was like 300 bucks and, uh, you know, a once a year class after that. I was like, yeah, well, some do. But it's like we learn as trainers we have the opportunity if you're, you know, investing your time and brain in the right spots to learn so much about the body and how to train it and how to make changes, how to modify, how to cr make a correct stimulus that it's almost a disservice to our clients to be that yelling cheerleader, that motivational quote giver outer, you know, because there's so much more that we can be doing. I even joke with my clients, like, don't count on me counting for you because there's so many other things that I need to be doing while you're, while you're exercising and what I need to be observing and adjusting and seeing what's happening that I can't keep counting. Like if you want to count, that's fine. But I'd rather you be thinking about the things that I need to be, that I'm asking you to do. And so that's why I, I never count. But yeah, there's just so much a trainer can provide for you that is not that push to the max, that cheerleader. And so if you like to go to the gym and that's what you're looking for, that's great. But there are probably... Oh my gosh, wait, before I get into this, if you like to go to the gym and you like that push, great. But I will tell you, I was at a luncheon the other day. And by the way, I'm in like a very biased world where everyone that I see during the day works out because they're my clients. And I remember the presenter was saying, you know, to be healthy, we all need, no, we need to exercise. So who in the room exercises? I could not believe the number of hands that did not go up. There was like five of us that rose our, uh, raised our hands and there was at, at least 30 people in the room. And so that shows me that if, if what you think of a trainer and what you think of the gym and what you think of working out is all about pushing yourself, that means that that model isn't working for you. And that means that you need to find a trainer or a gym that's doing something like Charlie and I are doing. Because 
n- not only is it going to work better for you, but it, you're actually going to start improving your health with exercise. And that is the main goal. That is the thing that's going to keep you doing the things you love in life, which is always the goal of exercise. Yeah, we're saying, yeah, we need to be healthy, blah, blah, blah. But what does health really do? It lets you do the junk in life that you like to do. And we want you doing the stuff you like. So I did want to highlight one thing, which is some of you listening to this are probably thinking, oh my gosh, I actually like the push thingy. And when I'm stressed out, when I'm not feeling great and I just push it and I turn my brain off and I push it, I just feel so good. And that is called adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And that is why you feel so good because you do get this adrenaline rush, which happens when you exercise. But there are some negative side effects of that. And we're not saying that you shouldn't use exercise. I would say if you if you use exercise as like your escape, the adrenaline rush, it's probably one of the better addictions out there. Better than, you know, drinking or drugs or what other shopping, other addictions that you could participate in. Exercise is, is probably one of the better ones. But there are some negative side effects. And that this is what brings hiccups for people. It's like, Some people will try to do that push thing. And it's like, wow, sometimes I do this and I feel so awesome because of the adrenaline and the different hormones and neurochemicals that are going around in your body, making you feel good, which is awesome. But a lot of times that pushing can lead to some really negative stuff like joint issues, chronic muscle issues, joint issues. And that is like the biggest reason why most people don't work out because they do it and they don't feel good. Or you'll see a lot of the like people that do it like to an addictive point where they love it, but then they're always like having to ice themselves or constantly stretch or constantly do body work, which, you know, if that's your life, that's fine. But we're bringing this up because many people don't know that there's this other side of fitness where it's like, hey, some of the most appropriate exercise is not found in what you currently think is 100% of the exercise scene. So what should a trainer be doing for you? You know, what is a role that a trainer should be playing? You know, I think first of all is they should be able to assess your body to determine in that moment what is appropriate for you from an exercise perspective. Now, there's always going to be a little bit of a guess and check going on right so there's always going to be like okay we can be as you know risk averse as possible but there's always a little bit of well we still need to see how your body responds so there's always going to be some of that going on but there are some very simple things that your trainer should be able to do for you that will really mitigate a lot of the risks that go that go along with exercise and therefore mitigate a lot of the negative responses that somebody can have from exercise. And so when it comes to like assessing your body and, you know, making decisions in the moment, one thing that is really key for this is your individual body's range of motion. And this is a big one. Okay. What is this? First of all, what does this not look like? And then we'll talk about what it is. What it does not look like is somebody stepping back watching you do a squat and saying, yeah, no, you know what? Your squat form doesn't match up to this ideal picture that I have in my head. So we need to change some things with how you are doing your squat in order to make this ideal picture. That's, that's not what, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. What, what it is not is saying, yeah, you know what? When you do your deadlift, when you do your lunge, You know, your knee should be doing this, but instead it's doing that. Your hips should be doing this, but instead it's doing that. And we need to, you know, we we need to bolster here. We need to put bands there. We need to force you to try to move in this way to match this ideal standard of a squat, a deadlift, a lunge of whatever it is that you're doing. That's not what I'm talking about here as far as being able to assess your range of motion. What it is, is saying, Okay, how does your body move today? How does your body move? Oh, I see you doing a squat. Oh, I see you shifting a little bit down at the bottom there at the squat. Mm, You know what? For the time being, I'm not going to have you go that low. And now all of a sudden, they are matching the exercise to your body instead of trying to match your body to the exercise. I love what you said there, Charlie. And as you were saying it, I thought of like the words that I think everyone that is like thrown out. It's just like cookie cutter, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't want a trainer that says, okay, body, Charlie, you're here. You're my client. We're going to do some squats and 
me as a trainer, I know what a squat should look like. So you're going to do some squats and I'm going to cue you until you look like the squat that I want you to look like. So I need you to fit into this cookie mold versus saying, all right, Charlie, you're my client today. Let's see what shape cookie you are today. I don't know. And a really good trainer is going to ask a lot of questions. If not, ex- if not outside, out, like externally to you, like verbally to you, definitely internally. So I'm always asking my clients like, hmm, what's that feel like today? I see you shifting at the bottom. Are you feeling anything weird or do you not even notice that? I see at the top you're, you know, you're kind of shifting over to the right or, you know, you're having to adjust here. I- is there something going on or are you not even thinking about that? Because sometimes people are not even aware. So asking a lot of questions of your clients and having an open mind of saying, you know, this person's body, not only from what I know from it in the past, you know, because you can have past experience of someone's body learning about them, but also you don't know how they came in today. You don't know if, you know, they're really sleep deprived or if they're not feeling great or if they're about to get ill and they haven't shown symptoms yet. You don't know the state of their body and we won't know we don't ever know. We can, you know, assume and, and make good decisions, but, you know, always seeing, okay, what shape of cookie is he today for this specific exercise? And then that all changes when we change exercises, even if it's two leg exercises, he's doing a squat and we switch to a lunch. I don't know what shape cookie you are today for lunch. Let's find out. No idea. And maybe there is just not the option to do that exercise today, which is totally fine. So another thing that a trainer should be able to do for you is be able to modify the exercise that you're doing in real time. And this really kind of stems from that last point that we made where they're able to assess your body in real time. They should also be able to then use that information to modify the exercises for you in real time. One thing that I think a lot of fitness professionals can fall into the habit of is, oh, this exercise is bothering you today? Okay, we're just not gonna do it at all. And the challenge with that is let's say it's a shoulder press for example and you're doing a shoulder press and you're noticing that it's kind of, you know it's kind of bothering your right shoulder a little bit and you tell your trainer and they're like okay well you know what we should just not do shoulder presses at all today well the challenge with that is that there's still value to doing shoulder presses to mm-hmm. you know working your joints through that range of motion to working the muscles that help to perform that challenge. And yeah, they're not saying that, okay, we're going to avoid doing shoulder presses indefinitely, but it could turn into that of, okay, well, every time we do shoulder presses, it bugs your shoulder. So we're just not going to do shoulder presses anymore. As opposed to being able to think through the situation and say, okay, well, I know Julie, like you were saying, this is the kind of cookie cutter variation of a shoulder press that I know, but what other of the thousands of modifications can be made to this exercise so it doesn't bother somebody's shoulders? I remember one time I had a client coming in and doing a shoulder press was bothering his shoulders. So what we found to be actually really helpful is when he would do the shoulder press motion, if he was also holding a band that was pulling out away from his body and then that felt really good for his shoulders and we did that for a couple sessions and then guess what by kind of working still working his joints through that range of motion still challenging the muscles involved with the shoulder press after doing that variation and modification of a shoulder press well a couple times later he was able to do what we might call like a standard cookie cutter shoulder press and it didn't there wasn't any issue with it and so having somebody that can think in the moment and be able to modify what the cookie cutter variation is to again match the exercise to your body what is your what is your body presenting today and let's create an appropriate challenge for that that's a really important thing that a trainer should be able to do And that's so great because that client was still getting all the muscle benefits from that exercise, but it just took a little bit of brain power and creativity from the trainer and some, you know, background education to figure out how can I make this work for this person? Because again, remember, that's the job of your trainers, like figuring out how to make exercise work for you. I also had a really good example of this. It happened just last week. I've been training this client for about six months now and, you know, everyone has their orthopedic stuff going on. One of them that she did not have was she has no knee issues, 
But every time we got a knee extension, she's like, this feels really weird. This does not feel like muscle focus. So when you exercise, you want things to feel like I feel a good muscle contraction, connection, good challenge to the muscle. It shouldn't feel like I just really feel my joints grinding or pinching. That's not a good sign. So for six months, we've been doing half sets, half range, modified isometrics. And for the first time in six months, we finally figured out all the correct modifications and side note for that day (laughs) we figured out the right you know machine settings for that day right padding supports right restraints we've also built up a lot of strength in her quads and in that position because we didn't not we didn't not do that exercise for six months we didn't do like a full set that we might qualify as a set but finally it was so cool last last week we did a two full sets of what we would call is like classical you know knee extensions full range of motion we did it for the whole you know minute 30 seconds that's what we're doing right now so it's just really really cool and I remember her being like dang I'm so glad you keep all those notes so that we could finally figure this out and that's also a really great sign of of a great client because it was like she never lost patience because we were still working those muscles it wasn't the way that like you know, the sign on the machine says that you should use that machine. But your trainer is there to figure out, okay, how are we going to challenge these quads? Not make it jointy, make it very muscle focused. How are we going to progress the quad muscles? And, you know, I didn't have an assumption that, you know, one day we should be able to do a full set because I don't, her body doesn't care if we do sets. (laughs) Her body cares if it gets the challenge, the stimulus. So it was just really cool to see how all the modifications over six months finally led to us doing two full sets of very muscle contraction focus, very stimulating knee extensions because it was definitely activity that she could not do in the beginning, even though during her health assessment and her, you know, her intake, there was no like, you know, Julie, be careful of my knees because I got a knee issue. There was none of that. So it was just cool. And I was excited because I was like, dang, you know, that's why I, you know, I get all this education so that I can serve people that, you know, are looking for you know, this kind of experience of, of uh, customized and specialized and personalized to your specific body on that specific day. Yeah, I, I love hearing stories like that because, again, it just highlights the idea that you know, exercise is a progression. And so, yes, you want to be able to do something right now, but guess what? It may not be appropriate for your body right now. And so having some professional guidance to say, hey, this is how we're going to troubleshoot things. This is how we are going to figure out how to make some version of this work for your body right now and then incrementally progress you towards getting to do the thing that you want to do. I mean, that that's the whole goal of exercise in the first place. So that's awesome. So the next point I want to bring up is injuries. If you have a good trainer, your trainer will know how to work around injuries. Now, injuries can be ones that are like, hey, you actually need medical input on this or you're needing to go to physical therapy. Or it can be an injury that is undiagnosed or, you know, is not needing medical intervention or anything like that. So let's talk about them both because I think that they're both important. Let's talk about the one where you get something diagnosed. Let's say, you you, you know, you broke your toe, you sprained your knee, something, you know, you have a bursa issue in your hip, whatever you have, herniated disc. Because as I said before, we all lead really stressful lives and we all lead pretty physically taxing lives, which is why we get injured in the first place. Now, I want to say this is that if you are going to physical therapy for something, that means that when you go to physical therapy, they're probably focused really on that one area, like your hip or your back or your knee or your foot or your shoulder. There are muscles in the rest of your body that are currently atrophying because you are not working those. The rest of your body is losing health. Your joints are becoming less healthy. Your muscles are becoming less metabolic. Your muscles are losing their power generators. There are certain things in your muscles that create power and create energy for you. You're losing those. You're also losing strength, function, and range of motion, your ability to move. And so just because you are going to shoulder physical therapy means that most people will say, well, I actually have to take six weeks off from my trainer because, you know, I'm going to shoulder physical therapy, obviously. Okay, well, I don't see the physical therapist working on your core strength and stability range of motion. I don't see your physical therapist working on your hips. So when you look around your gym, your trainer should be able to figure out 
how to do a full workout without injuring or further injuring that area. Even if your physical therapist is saying, hey, don't work your shoulders right now. We need to really focus on this. That's cool. Your trainer should respect that. That's fine. But that also means the rest of your body should not suffer in health because you feel like because you're in a physical therapy, you can't work anything else. That also goes for anywhere else in your body. You have a hip issue and your physical therapist doesn't want you to... By the way, most physical therapists are pro-exercise. I just wanted to let you know that. So they they probably would love if you're doing exercise. And this also leads us to your trainer should know how to modify. So your trainer should be able to call up your physical therapist and say, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so. I'm Joe's trainer. I know he's going to see you for, you know, a hip thing. What things do you want me to encourage him to do? What things should I be laying off of? And I will make sure that we are working together and we're not violating anything that you're doing in your sessions because both people should be on your team but you can also say hey also physical therapist doctor physical therapy we're gonna also work on his knees his feet his trunk which if anything is going to provide more support for the hip or you know wherever else in your body you're struggling with and will help you heal faster i promise you you will heal heal faster and you won't be coming back from six six weeks of doing nothing for the rest of your body you need to keep your body in condition it is so important yeah it's definitely one thing that i've noticed with a lot of our clients here that have also gone to physical therapy at the same time is they'll report hey my physical therapist is like shocked by my strength right now. They're shocked by how quickly I'm progressing because they don't normally see this, you know, with their with their regular patients that come in. And they attribute it to the fact that they're still exercising, you know, they're still making sure their muscles are working well. They're still doing something to improve the overall health of their body and and the other areas of their body that would support the work that they're doing with physical therapy. So this is this is a really big one. And then not only that, but also understanding that, look, if you are going to physical therapy or something where you can't exercise for a certain area of your body and you feel like then, then that is a reason why you can't exercise for anywhere in your body, there are tremendous health consequences that come from taking extended time off from exercise. I mean, mm-hmm. within three days of inactivity, you have negative changes in insulin sensitivity so it means you're less sensitive to your insulin you have which means your body needs to produce more insulin to get the same response which by the way that's what starts to trend towards type 2 diabetes you have negative changes in ldl to hdl ratio so your cholesterol changes are not positive you have negative changes in cardiac function so again your heart health starts to diminish and that's just within three days of inactivity and so if you're thinking yeah you know what i need to be going to physical therapy for the next six weeks and so i'm just going to take that time off of exercise that's a lot of negative health changes that will be that will be occurring during that time because you're not exercising for the rest of your body when one area is not working well charlie i I know i shared this story with you last night (laughs) But I just love this story. So when I was in college, my freshman year, um, so I broke my ankle pretty bad. So like if you look down at your ankle, you know how you have that like bump on the inside and the bump on the outside of your ankle? So I broke off like the tip of the inside one, uh, which people don't do because normally people do the outside. So anyways, it was just a weird spot to break. So I had to get that like screwed back into my bone. And then I had these like little wires connecting my two uh, shin bones. So it was just pretty bad break. And it was coupled with a high ankle sprain, which probably took longer to heal than the actual bone. Anyways, I was in college and in college, I really had not much to do except for go to school, study, eat and work out. And so I remember I was probably like two weeks post post op, you know, back at school, hobbling around with crutches on my uh, with my boot and stuff. And I remember I would hobble over to the gym and then I would take my boot off, put my uh, workout shoe on and I would lift weights. And you know what was so funny is like, normally my workouts, I would do like cardio and weights mixed. I was like pretty into cardio. I especially love cycling. So obviously I couldn't do that, but I could do almost everything else. I could do every weight machine in the gym except the leg press. I could do everything. And I had this, you know, broken leg. So 
clearly I spent a lot of time sitting on my butt with my leg up, you know? That was like 23 hours of the day. So that one hour a day, I did it because, you know, I had nothing else to do and I couldn't sit in the library for like 10 hours a day. Like I, all I could handle was like eight. So <laughs> I had to do something else during that time. But looking back and the knowledge that I have now, I was like, dang, that probably really saved me because physical therapy wasn't recommended for me. I don't know why, whether that's good or bad, but it just wasn't. So I, it wasn't like I was getting like direct instruction on like what to do with my ankle. But also I'm like one of those people that gains weight. So like if I wasn't working out and moving, not only would would my muscles and joints have paid for it because I would have been just neglecting them overall, but also I would have had a lot more weight on my foot, which is not good. Like my foot is accustomed to like, I think I was like 140 pounds then. So 140 pounds. So it wouldn't have been great to be lethargic, lazy, doing nothing, and then gaining weight. And I remember so many people would come up to me and like, wow, that's so cool that you're working out. And I thought, well, what else am I supposed to do? And everything in this gym I can do minus the leg press and the cardio. There's like so many options. Like I can do most of this stuff, you know? So I would be there lifting the dumbbells, lifting weights and doing the leg machines again, minus the leg press. So really just because I couldn't do 100% of the machines there, I could still make 100% of my workout from 95% of the machines there. That was plenty good because when you go to workout, it's not like you're using everything anyways. So you just pick and choose until you can get back to it. Now, that's a perfect lead into this last point that we want to bring up of what your trainer should be able to do. And in addition to being able to assess your body to being able to modify the exercise to meet what your body's presenting, to be able to modify the exercises for any injuries that are going on. Your trainer should also be able to modify the intensity of your workouts. Okay. And what this means is there has to be more than two settings to your workout, which is full on blast and not working out. Like there has to be more than those two settings. There has to be, hey, you know what? Or leisure walk. Right, exactly. Can we put in three? Come on, there's three settings. Sure, yeah, yeah. Leisure walk. Netflix and chill, leisure (laughs) walk, you know, full on blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There has to be like, hey, you know what? I drank too much this weekend and I still need to work out. So I'm going to exercise, but it's not going to be as hard as I normally do. There has to be a, you know what? my stomach's not feeling that great. I don't feel nauseous, but maybe I ate something a little weird at lunch today. Uh, I know I still need to exercise, but I'm going to go a little bit easier. There has to be a, hey, you know what? I've been on three flights this week and I'm feeling pretty jet lagged. You know, can we not go as hard today, but I still want to exercise? There has to be that ability to say, yeah, you know what? You are not at maximum capacity because let's be serious. When are we ever at maximum capacity? capacity and say, you're right. Yeah. You're not a maximum capacity today. So we're going to not go as hard with some things. And that has to be something that your trainer is able to do. And so if you're feeling like, well, I can only go see my trainer when I'm at a hundred percent. Yeah. You're never at a hundred percent ever, but that's not on you to decide the modifications to make for your workout. That's on your trainer. That's why you're hiring your trainer Mm -hmm. to say, Hey, this is what my body's presenting today. My battery's charged up about 75%. Kid was screaming all night, didn't sleep that well. What are we gonna do about it? And that's on your trainer to be able to then change how you're gonna be exercising on that day so you can still nudge your health in the right direction and not deplete it. Charlie, I think this is one of the biggest points of this podcast is like, I think we all know how to really push ourselves and it, it gets easier when we do have that raw, raw cheerleader, which is again, why most people hire a trainer. But the thing we all really suck at is figuring out how do we modify a workout to fit my body today, right now, whatever joint issues I have going on. And that is the value of hiring a quality personal trainer. And I promise you that if you modify your workouts to be appropriate to your body, you'll be able to do more. I have a really good example of this and you're going to listen to it and you might think, well, obviously that's like, duh, because I think this person is kind of in the extreme, 
but guess what? It applies to everyone that is less extreme than this person. So last spring, I had um, one of the snowbirds that live here. He's 85. He loves to golf. And the big thing with his golf was that if he overdoes it, he's shot for the week, you know. And here in Illinois, if you're a golfer, you do not want to miss any golf days because this season is very short. It gets really hot and it gets really cold. So you need to hit all the days. You don't want your body getting in the way. And also, by the way, when you're 85, if you're not doing something to keep yourself moving, you go downhill really fast. But guess what? When you're 35 and you're not doing anything for your body, your body's also going downhill. You just feel the effects differently, meaning you can get up and out of bed, but that's when your back pain starts kicking in, stuff like that. Anyways, I told you this is an extreme case or this is like a very highlighted case, I guess we could say. Okay, so I said, all right, when you don't feel good, I want or when you feel like you've overdone it in golf and it's like the day you're not going to golf, I want you to go to the gym and you already have a great weight training routine and you already know how to push yourself. What I want you to do is do half of all that. I want you to do half the weight, half the reps, half the sets. He's like, really? Like, wouldn't that be a waste of time to do that? Because I'm like not pushing myself. That's the goal of the gym. And I said, no, no, no. The goal of the gym is not always to push yourself. Some days, yeah, but every day, whether you're pushing it, whether you're doing half, whether you're doing a quarter, whether you're doing 95%, every single day, the gym is there to progress your body. So if you're feeling really cruddy from your golf game and you're feeling like, dang, well, now the rest of my week is shot, which again, is like the worst thing for a golfer in Illinois, go to the gym do half of everything and I promise that that will help to boost your body and sure enough he was like oh my gosh that was amazing that was not a waste of my time so just try it just try it try a workout that is not pushing it and it'll definitely help your body be more functional be um, stronger because I told him I said hey you're 85 you cannot go three or four days without going to the gym you can't do that you're 85. You need more muscle stimulus because I know, and he knows, the rest of his time, he's sitting. He's sitting, watching TV. He loves to read. He loves to do his crossword puzzles. So there's not much muscle stimulus going on other than when he goes to the gym. So the minimum for him would be every other day because the other days he should be golfing. Julie, are you familiar with the show Man vs. Food? I don't know. I, it's not Rena Bell. So it's a show on the, and I believe it's on the Food Network. Maybe it's not on the Food Network, but it sounds like a Food Network thing. <laughs> it definitely could be. Anyways, essentially, it's like an eating challenge. Every place that this guy goes, so he searches out, you know, all all the places that have these different eating challenges. Whether oh, it's like like eat this gigantic you know, burger yeah, like a five pound a burger, <laughs> you know, like the forty inch pizza or something like that. So okay. he goes and he tries to accomplish all those. And I think a lot of people think of a trainer as man versus food. Like uh-huh. you're gonna you're gonna go to your trainer and they're gonna present this tremendous challenge that is going to be extremely taxing on your body that is not gonna feel that great during it's not gonna f- have you feeling that great after you might get some pride from accomplishing it a little ego boost but it's gonna take some time to recover you might not feel well for a couple of days but that's what's supposed to happen mm-hmm. and. We're saying, yeah, no, you know what? The the man versus food version of a trainer, that, that's not actually the role of the trainer. The the role of the trainer is maybe more like Top Chef, yeah. but a little bit different, you know, because a t- Top Chef, I'm probably screwing up the show, but I think there's like three judges or whatever, and they sit there and they say, okay, you know, you have this much time to make this kind of dish, and so you have these super talented chefs that come in, and you know, with what they have with the time and the ingredients, they try to make something that looks amazing. I'm sitting there watching that show and I'm like, okay, that looks like three bites of something. How can it be any good? And then the judges sit back and they're like, yeah, you know what? Uh, it's just a little bit too tart for my taste. And you know, the, the chefs are trying to, they're really talented, but they're trying to appease, you know, kind of like 
all three judges at once. And so it's like Top Chef, but if there was just like one judge mm-hmm. and you had multiple rounds with that judge and they say, you know what? Yeah, this is just a little too tart. Like, okay, well, let me make it a little bit different. How Wait, does this taste? I just taste learned now? about your taste. Yeah, yeah. like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, how does this taste? And they're like, yeah, but you know what? It's not quite filling enough. Like, oh, okay, let me, let me put a little mm-hmm. bit more. Yeah, but I don't want necessarily more of this. Maybe I want, you know, I don't want a, a little bit more of the dessert. Maybe give me a little bit more of the steak. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, well, let, let me give you a little bit more of that. Mm-hmm. And it's like somebody that makes this beautiful meal exactly to your taste, exactly for your preferences and how your body's doing. It's like, yeah, you know what? I ate a big lunch earlier. I don't need to eat that much now. Okay, cool. We're going we're gonna to not do that much right now. We're not, not going to serve you, you know, four rounds of this steak. We're going to go, you know, with just a little bit of a taste. You, you let me know how you like that. And mm-hmm. That is the role of the trainer. It's not man versus food. It's like top chef, but only like you and one person. And it's multiple rounds where they get to figure out exactly what your tastes are and what you enjoy and what you enjoy right then, right now versus, well, this is what you enjoyed last week. Why are you telling me that you you don't want this this week? It's like, because I've had it for like the last six weeks straight. I want something different. Give me something different. And so... They're able to do that for you. That's the role of a trainer. Mm-hmm. That's that's a role that a trainer should be able to play for you. So if you're feeling like when you go to work with a trainer, it becomes this, you know, again, this man versus food thing, this push it to the max, this cookie cutter. Hey, this is what we make for everybody. This is what's on the menu. You know, eat it, like it or leave. You know, then that's not the role of an exercise professional, a true exercise professional. A true exercise professional can say, hey, you know what? This is what your body's presenting today. This is what your goals are. This is what your interests are. This is what you like. This is what you don't like. And I'm going to create something completely customized for you based on how your body's operating right now and then be able to modify it as we go along because what we thought you liked at the beginning, that might change by the end. That's the role of the trainer. So if you're feeling like, yeah, you're working with a trainer and they're more the former versus the latter, definitely send us a message so we can connect you with somebody in your area because we have a lot of colleagues all throughout the U.S. that are able to help with that, that are able to create exercise that is built for your body. Or if you're saying, you know what, I'm still not super interested in working with a trainer, we have some virtual options as well, one of which is our at-home workout program, which, yes, it's not completely customized to you, but it's going to take a lot of the principles that we use when we work with clients in person, and it's going to deliver them in a virtual format to kind of teach you how to exercise appropriately for your body to build the health and function of your body. So if that option's of interest to you, go to homeworkout.matschaumberg.com, and you can find out all the details and download it from there. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is working with a trainer or that is, you know, a little bit concerned about working with a trainer or that has a trainer, but they're like, yeah, I only go to them when I want to work out really hard. Share this episode with them so they can learn what the actual role of a true trainer exercise professional is. And while you're online, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find this podcast when they're looking for information on exercise and when they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week.